Hello, math students, whether you're in grade 9, 10, 11, 12, whatever grade or year you are in, I'm sure that this video is for you. You do learn about trinomials in the younger grades, so grade 9, that's why I say grade 9 first, but you are tested on it again in grade 10, and then in 11 and 12, and so on. So let's do trinomials. First thing about trinomials, tri means 3. So when we do trinomials, when you are asked to factorize an algebraic expression and you see something with three terms, trinomials needs to pop into your head. So this is an example of an algebraic expression that I can factorize using the trinomial method. Remember, very important rule about factorizing that I always want to stick into your head is always try highest common factor first. Super important. But in this case, you can see I can't take out a highest common factor. There's three terms. It's none of the other types we've learned so far, like difference of two squares. It must be trinomials. So there's technically three different types of trinomials that you can be asked in mathematics. The first one is when the coefficient of the squared term is one. Now, I know I said x squared here, but remember, any variable can be used. You can see the coefficient or the number before this is one, an invisible one. We can't take out our highest common factor. That's fine. The coefficient is one. That's the first type. The second type of trinomials that we will tackle is when the coefficient of x squared or the squared term is a highest common factor. So there's a big number in front of the squared term, but we can take it out as an HCF. So if you look at the second example over here, you can see, yes, there is a three in front of the squared term. But remember, if you are asked to factorize this expression, you always need to try highest common factor first. Three can divide into three, three can divide into 21, and three can divide into 24. So we can take three out as a highest common factor. Then we're left with a squared minus 7a minus 8. So we've taken three out. Remember, you always distribute or multiply the three back in to check if you are correct. So we've taken three out. Then it creates a trinomial that is exactly like the first type we spoke about, where the coefficient of the squared term, the number in front of a squared here, is an invisible one. So here, all good. Just take out the HCF and then do normal trinomials. The third type is something that you learn from grade 10 onwards. And it is where the coefficient of x squared is not a highest common factor, and it's not one. So if you look at this example over here, you can see that the squared term x squared has a three in front of it. Unlike the previous example, we cannot take three out as a highest common factor. You can see here that three cannot divide into four, nor can it divide into one. So I cannot take out a highest common factor, you have to apply a completely different method in order to do this trinomial. But in this video, what we're going to be sticking with or practicing is the first type of trinomial, which is the most basic. It's the type that you absolutely need to know how to do before you can do any of the others that I discussed. You need to be able to master this, so let's do it. The first thing that I just want to show you is if I give you a binomial binomial, binomial times binomial here. You know you can apply the method that I taught earlier in this playlist where you multiply everything in the first bracket with everything in the second bracket or the FOIL method and you get the following. If you don't know how to do this, please go watch the previous videos in this playlist. This can be simplified to because I added the like terms over here to give me 10x. So if I expand, if I go this way, it's called expand or it's called distribute. Okay, we can say simplify. And if I go from this, can you see that this is now a trinomial, three terms? And I ask you to factorize, you are going to end up with what we started with. So if I give you a trinomial and I ask you to factorize, we're going backwards, we're creating two brackets, you're creating one term. And if I give you two brackets like this and ask you to expand, we end up with a trinomial. So they're doing the opposite of each other essentially. So Basically, what I'm trying to show you is if I ask you to factorize this following trinomial, what we're going to end up with is two brackets. That is what our answer is going to be. And if I had to ask you to expand or distribute or do the FOIL method, you will distribute, 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 and then you'll end up back at this answer. Okay, so if the question says factorize, ultimately, if we're factorizing a trinomial, we're going to end up with two brackets. Now, how do we figure out what goes in those two brackets? That is where you follow this following method. Here are the steps or the method. Okay, so the first 
step says write the constant term. So the term that has no variable, in this case it's 12, we're going to write that as product. So what does that mean? It means what multiplied by what gives me 12? Which numbers? So 1 times 12 gives me 12. 2 times 6 gives me 12. And 3 times 4 gives me 12. There are no other products or number combinations that when I multiply them together, it gives me 12. So those are the three. Okay, so you list them. You can do them in your head if you want. You don't always have to write them out on paper. That is step one, done. And you're always going to do that for the constant term. So that is a term with no variable. The second one says, choose the product combination. So one of these three pairs that when I add them or subtract them, they give me the middle term. So what do I mean by middle term? I actually mean the coefficient, so the number in front of the x, so positive 7. So which of these three, if I add them or subtract them, gives me positive 7? Well, 12, let's start with 12 and 1. 12 plus 1 is 13, and 12 minus 1 is 11, so it's definitely not that. 6 plus 2 is 8. 6 minus 2 is 4, so it's not that. 3 and 4, if I add those two together, it gives me 7. So I need to choose the product combination and I need to make a positive 7. It's very important that you take away of the fact that we're trying to make a positive 7. So how do you use the numbers 3 and 4 to give me a positive 7? You take a positive 4 and a positive 3 or a positive 3 and a positive 4. It doesn't matter the order, but they both have to be positive. So once you figure that out, you should know that, okay, a positive 4 and a positive 3, those two, if I add them together, it gives me a positive 7. That is what the second step is saying. However, you always need to check for me that when I multiply your chosen things together, so we've got a positive 4 and a positive 7, positive 3, sorry, when I multiply these two things together, does it give me the last term? Positive 4 times positive 3 gives me positive 12. So we know positive 4 and positive 3 is correct. So in your one bracket, you're going to have plus 4, positive 4. In your other bracket, you're going to have plus 3. And then because it says x squared here, you have to have an x and an x. And this is your answer. This is your factorized trinomial finished. Now, how do you check if you've done it correctly? So how do you check? This was the question. This was my answer. In order to check, we do our distribution or our binomial times binomial, our FOIL method. X times X is X squared. X times 3 is 3X. 4 times X is 4X. And 4 times 3 is positive 12. We add like terms. So we end up with X squared plus 7X plus 12. This needs to match your question exactly. Then you know you've done it correctly. Another common question I get asked often from students is, does it matter which way we write the brackets? No, your answer could also be x plus 3, x plus 4, as long as the 4 has a plus next to it and the 3 has a plus next to it. Let's do another example. Remember your steps that I wrote in the previous slide. So you take the constant term and you do the product. So what times what gives me 25? 1 times 25 and we've got 5 times 5. We need to choose one that when I add them together or subtract them, it gives me the middle term. So 25 and 1, that's not going to get me 10. Negative 10. Nowhere near. So it's definitely not that one. It's going to be 5 and 5. 5 plus 5 give me, gives me 10. However, this one is a little bit more tricky. So remember with trinomial, you're going to have two brackets as your answer. Always write out the two brackets first. That's how I always, always start because we know we're going to fill these in. Then remember, as the steps say, you need to choose the product combination that when I add them or subtract them, it gives me the middle term. We've got 5 and 5. Just be careful. If you say 5 plus 5, so positive 5, and a positive 5. What does that give me? That gives me a positive 10. Am I trying to make a positive 10? No, I'm trying to make a negative 10. Okay, so it's not going to work if you say plus 5 and plus 5. That's not going to work. So you need to try something else. Sometimes my students will say, okay, ma'am, what about 5 minus 5? What's 5 minus 5? 0. My middle term is definitely not 0. It's negative 10. So how can I use a 5 and a 5 to get me a negative 10. Think about integers. It's negative 5 
minus five. Think about it like this. Negative five, you owe someone five rand. Negative five, you owe them another five rand. How much do you owe them in total? Negative 10. So minus five, minus five is negative 10. So it could be minus five, minus five. But the last step says, just remember, double check. You must multiply them together and they must give you the constant term. So what do I mean by that? I mean negative five times negative five. What does that give me? A negative times a negative is a positive. Positive 25. Is this a positive 25? Yes. So we know negative five and negative five is correct. So x minus five, x minus five. Let's do another one. I want you to pause the screen and try this one yourself. Right, remember you are factorizing. This is a trinomial. We cannot take out our highest common factor. We are going to have two brackets in our answer because our answer for a trinomial will always consist of two brackets when we factorize a trinomial. Our first step, the constant term, we're going to look for the products. So what multiplied by what gives me six? One times six and two times three. This is a tricky one and I gave you this one for a reason because if you take a look at 1 times 6 and 2 times 3 and you think about it quickly, both of them give you 5. So 6 minus 1 and 3 plus 2. So you can make the number 5 with either of these combinations. Remember, the next step is you choose one. Then when you add them together or subtract them, it must give you the middle term. So this is where the trick comes in. It needs to give me the middle term, negative five. So which of these two combinations, if I add them or subtract them, will give me negative five? A lot of my students, I'll give them this question and they'll say six minus one, just like I gave you. This is a positive 6 and a negative 1. However, that gives me positive 5. So that's not working because I don't want a positive 5. I want a negative 5. Or they'll say to me, okay, fine, ma'am. What about negative 6 and a positive 1? Okay. You owe someone 6 rand. You pay them back 1 rand. You owe them 5 rand. And you might think, okay, cool. Negative 6 plus 1. That gets me negative 5. You're correct. It does give you negative five. But remember, the last rule that I mentioned says when you multiply your two chosen things together. So we said negative six and a positive one. When you multiply them together, it needs to get you the last term. So negative six multiplied by positive one. What's a negative multiplied by a positive? A negative six. Is this negative six? No. So our combination of negative six and positive one does not work, okay? It does not work. So if you answered x minus six and x plus one, you are incorrect, unfortunately. You did not check your answer. So let's consider our next option, two and three. Okay, how am I going to use two and three to give me negative five? You can't say three minus two because that gets me one. You can't say negative 3 plus 2 because that gets me negative 1. You can't say 3 plus 2 because that gets me positive 5. So I hope that you see that it's negative 3 minus 2. You owe someone 3 rand. You owe them another 2 rand. You owe them 5 rand. So if I have a negative 3 and a negative 2, that gets me negative 5 if I add them or subtract them. Then if I multiply these two together, negative three multiplied by negative two, a negative and a negative gives me a positive, three times two gives me six, so I get my last term. So in your brackets, you should have x minus three, x minus two. So you can check using the FOIL method like I did over here for the previous question, or you can check doing what I basically did over here. If you add or subtract them, in this case, I'm subtracting negative three minus two, it gives, you it gives you the middle term. If you multiply them, it gives you the last term. That's how I do my checking. So this is your answer. You don't have to show me any of this working out. I hope that this has been helpful. Remember to find more factorizing videos. Click the link in the description box below. Also, more resources. You can see find them on my website. I hope to see you in another video very soon. Bye, everyone.